Hi everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. This is Petal, or at least welcome to our Two Cents book club. Um, I don't know, I might be the only one here hanging out, <laughs> or at least with three of my friends. And we're gonna, you know, we're talk chatting today about um, this incredible book, um, Viola Davis's book, uh, Finding Me. And it has been an amazing, I mean, uh, experience just reading about her life and and her experience with her family and what it was like growing up poor and just you know a, in an abusive situation and it is just I mean uh, the one thing I could say about this is that it is raw <laughs> It's the one word that keeps um, jumping out at me that it is just raw. <laughs> So anyways, um, right now are just so our 24 friends that have joined us so far. It's set for uh, the Two Cents crew coming in to be in the live chat, but I don't see them right now. So if you give me a second, I'm going to jump over and I'm going to open this up to everyone that could jump into the live chat. And hopefully you guys have read the book and, um, and we can, you know, chat, you can call in you know, either call in or just um, come into the live chat and we can talk about the book. So if you give me one second, I'm going to change the settings and come right back and, and let everyone into the chat. Okay, so um, to all of our 31 friends that have joined us so far, um, if you've been a subscriber to our channel for the, at least a week, you are able to come into the chat right now. So come on in and uh, join me as we chat about Viola Davis's book, Finding Me. And um, goodness, grievances. Um, there are so many things. Hi, Sharon. Hi. <laughs> hello, Sharon Augustine. Welcome in. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hopefully our Two Sons crew will show up as well. And uh, we can um, all be chatting about the book. I know at least a few of them have been reading the book. I'm, I'm actually hoping everyone had a chance to. And I know like I had to read it in little bits bites because it is so much and so deep and so raw and so real. So I am hoping that, you know, that we all had a chance to do, you know, to just, just dive into it. And I literally finished up the last chapter this morning and, you know, so it's great to see, you know, it pretty much ending with, you know, her Academy Award win and all of that stuff. So um, that is really awesome. Oh, Sharon, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Glenn is here. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And so, yes, you guys are the first ones here. And oh, I see Angela is here. Hello, Angela. And Nala Thando is here hanging out with us from South Africa. Hello, all of our wonderful squaddies in South Africa and uh, surrounding countries. <laughs> Um, welcome, 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 guys. So, um, there are so many things about this book, but you know, for oh, Teresa's here. Hello, Teresa, pink waving hands. Hello, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, what how it pops up on my screen, it pops up as literally, as you can see on the screen, pink waving hand, pink waving hand, <laughs> pink waving, pink. <laughs> it's just it's so funny that it does that. Um, but hello, Teresa, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, <laughs> how are you all this wonderful Friday? Uh, Saturday morning. Um, I'm so happy. Like I had the morning off. Like 
I don't have to work. I'm working later on tonight. And so I can actually hang out and not feel like rushed. But um, <laughs> this is awesome. So how did you guys read the book? What did you, what is your, you know, um, what is your impression of the book? Um, I would love to know if any of it resonates, if, if you know, any of your experiences were similar, what it was like for you. Um, I, I mean, you know, if you don't want to share personal stuff, that's totally fine as well. But I would just love to know. I know I related to so many of the things that she talked about, um, you know, and so many of her feelings going through as this child and in this vulnerable situation in a volatile home. And so I know a lot of us um, have been through that. I certainly have. And um, it's so funny. It wasn't, um, I didn't, I wasn't raised with my mom. I grew up uh, with my grandmother. So um, it's not um, a little bit later in life. I think my mom asked, she asked me what it was like to growing up there and um you know i had to tell her a little i think she was a little surprised when i told her some of the things that i experienced because you know she did she i wasn't raised with her and so if my mom is watching she'll probably relate to or at least recognize some of the things i might share or may or may not share but yeah um Let's see. Teresa says, love you, girl. Keep your chat going. I'm so behind in my reading. Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry faced red heart shape. Oh, she's that's an emoji, I guess. Um, that's okay. That's fine. I mean, you know, you you don't have to have finished reading the book. I mean, it is a, again, I had to take it in you know, little pieces. That's why it took me so long to finish it because it was so much. Uh, so that's fine. Even if you didn't finish reading it, it's totally fine. Um, hello, Janice. Welcome. Um, <laughs> I'm happy you're here. And V Thomas is here. V says, hello, everyone. I didn't finish reading the book, but I'm not going to stay. Just stopping by to say good afternoon to you all and wish you a great day. Oh, well, thank you, V. Thank you for stopping by. Um, you know, I'm not sure how long you're staying if you're just saying hi and running off. But if you, um, you know, not running off at the second, um, I don't know if you'd like to share some, you know, anything that you got from the book that would be awesome i'm also gonna put the link in in the chat so if you um i would love if you you know if you've started reading the book read anything about the book read read about anything in the book um definitely give me a call i'd love to have you on and we can chat um here so the link is in the chat so if you'd like to call in and share anything that would be awesome as well. But um, I would like to, you know, start just, um, again, this whole, the majority of the book, I think, um, and we do, we did the last book we did was about with Tyler Perry and his life. And again, I knew nothing about Tyler Perry's life until I read that book. I literally knew nothing other than Tyler Perry wrote plays. I knew he was homeless. I knew for a little bit and lived in his car and I knew he wrote plays and got rich and had movies and, and theater, you know, shows. Beyond that, I knew nothing about Tyler Perry's life. I could not have imagined when I read his life story. I'm in the same boat with Viola Davis. Actually, I knew less about Viola Davis than the almost nothing that I knew about Tyler Perry's life. I literally didn't knew nothing about her life whatsoever. And so um, everything I learned about her um, in this book was everything was new other than she's an actress and she did theater, she did movies and television, and she won Academy Award and, and other awards as well. I think she won a Tony and an Emmy. I think she won as well. Other than those, I knew nothing about her personal life at all. And so everything I learned, I pretty much learned from um, from reading the book. And it, I have to say, it was so jarring. And so one of the reasons why I had to, you know, read it in small doses because it was so much to take in. And again, my first, the, the one word I can use about this book is raw. 
<laughs> so for you guys in the chat, um, I would love to hear, um, you know, uh, your take on the book and um, just sort of like your overall, and then we'll go into, you know, specific things. But um, any overall take you've had on the book, I would love to hear. Um, oh, Teresa says, I met her on the set of 50 Cent's movie. My daughter was in the movie. Oh, that is so fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. What was she like when you met her? And um, since your daughter worked with her, um, what um, what was your daughter take about her? Um, you know, you know, what was she like as a person to work with? Um, did she, you know, get to, um, you know, talk with her or anything like that? So I would love to hear. Definitely do share. That's awesome. Um, uh, hey, Cookies and Cream, our awesome moderator is here. Um, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm just asking you for right now, overall take, um, you know, or maybe even if it's a one word that you would describe finding me. <laughs> and I mean, my word is raw. <laughs> that was, that was the, 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 the overriding sense that I have. It was just here is who I am. You know, and it was just like ripping open a part who she is and just, just, you know, and I can't imagine how vulnerable you feel after that. Uh, you know, when you've ripped yourself open and put your heart out there and knowing anyone could step on it, you know, and one of my friends described her child going away to, you know, to go do some work in another country. That's how she felt like her heart was walking outside of her body and anyone could step on her heart. And that's, that's kind of the imagery that I have with this book. It's just raw and putting your whole heart out there, knowing that, anyone could step on it and it's just you're just open <laughs> in that way it is that's a terrifying thing um cookies and cream says it's interesting what is interesting about it um i'd love to know give me some details <laughs> some absolute details so um one of the things that um one of the things that i you know at the beginning of the book, one of the overriding things um, for her life as a dog, as a child, and I think you know, reading it, I was just so afraid. I was lit. I felt like I was in that story, so afraid for her and her sisters in the environment that they lived in. You know, um, just the just hearing her describe or reading her describe. I, I got the audio book, so it was hearing, hearing her describe what it was like living in a home where your father is literally beating your mother with a lot of times intending to kill her and definitely you know into you know there was one point at well she talks about this at the end when she talks about you know her father literally trying to break her mother's legs and with a wood and hitting hitting her with the wood and it was <laughs> I can't imagine being a child seeing just the trauma of seeing something like that. And she talked about just screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. And I can't imagine what that would be like, you know? Um, oh, Teresa uh, says, um, she is everything you see. My daughter was very impressed with her. Uh, we knew she was going to make it. She was, uh, I guess you mean she was going to make it. She talked about the struggle of Hollywood. We are looking forward to reading her book. Oh, okay. Um, so cool. Definitely read it. Um, it is definitely because she talks about um, that. She mentioned the 50 Cent movie. It's very uh, short um, part in the book. She mentioned um, the, the, the 50 Cent movie as well. So, um, so yeah, definitely, definitely give it a read. Um, but I, uh, you know, just um, going back to what I was saying, um, just the the fear. There's so many fears in her life. Um, just you know, from the the constant fighting with her parents, um, and not you know, not just fighting, you know, fighting each other, but the overriding her father's just violence, just straight up violence against not only. Um, 
the her mom but towards them and you know and then his alcoholism and the 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 the, the poverty they live in she talked about so much about being hungry that was like an overriding theme that's like the hunger the rats and the cold it felt like they they, they were like specific characters in a book they were like, you know, it almost felt like they were they, they were people in a book that just they were just constant throughout her life, being cold, being hungry, being afraid of her father and afraid of the rats, and another one was peeing her bed, and it just like this, absolutely, it, it's just devastating to see just a child so young that is what is shaping um her um Chota Sesi says I only listened to a few minutes audio version and it's raw and devastating young life was jarring yeah absolutely jarring it is you have to prepare yourself like one of my best friends she's like I can't read it I can't read it I was, she and I was talking about it. she's like I can't read it I just can't read it you know um, Teresa says, um, see the interview with her and Oprah. It was an eye, it was an eye opener. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't see, I haven't seen any interviews. I haven't, you know, read anything. Um, I just wanted to get from the book, um, get it from the book. So I hadn't seen any of, any of what she has said. So, um, you know, so I don't get any other, any other info from what other than when I get in the book, but yeah, it is just really, really, really jarring. So, um, you know, and it, it, you know, wetting her bed became a thing all pretty much all through her life until I think the last time she wet her bed was in college when I think she had just started college. I think it was when she wet her bed and it's just, you know, um, many of us, myself included, when I was little, I think the last time I wet my bed probably was about seven or eight, maybe about that. I think it's so funny. Yesterday, I was trying to think of what was I dream? I was dreaming. I either that it was, I was pouring out water or it was raining, something like that. And it was just coming down. And next thing you know, it woke me up and then my bed was wet. And, but I do, I do so relate to all of the things she's talking about, the fear, you know, the constant fear. She talked about not being able to sleep at all, maybe an hour because of the fighting all night in um, her um, in her home, the fighting, the abuse, and then the fear of those rats running around the house, including one that you know almost went and and you know in her mom's mouth. That's how much that there was just all these traumatic things going on, and then they moved into this place, and there was a constant fire, always this fire that you know because I guess bad electricity and all of that stuff, and it was just like oh my gosh. I was I was reading these chapters terrified for her. Terror. And even though I know they're, you know, we know Viola's alive today, I was reading it so in the story and completely just terrified that she was gonna die in these fires. You know? And then on top of that, um, oh cookies and cream says. What is interesting is her resilience, tenacity to overcome so many obstacles. It truly tells at your heartstring. You can read it without being emotional. Yeah, a very, very, very true. Very true. It just, to, to come through what she has come through. It's, and then to, you know, to achieve what she has achieved in spite of all of the things that she has faced. It's unreal. Like I was reading and I, and I kept having to remind myself like, no, that's Viola Davis. This woman that you had no idea that this is what she's lived through. Um, Teresa says, OMG pedal that happened to me as a child, but had wonderful mother and grandmother. Wow. Okay. So are we talking about what wetting your bed? Um, uh, you know, kids, I think kids wet their bed for different reasons. Um, I don't know, you know, there was a lot of, for myself included, there was a lot of abuse in my past. So I don't know. I never, at least, you know, I, I don't know what, what it 
specifically what it is that caused me to wet my bed. But they, I mean, I come from an abused background as well. Nothing compared to what Viola has been through at all. Um, but, um, you know, look, it doesn't, you don't have to have gone through that to be abused. And so, um, and, you know, and so Teresa is like, I went through that and, um, but she had a wonderful mother and grandmother. So I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about wetting your bed. If I'm, if I'm wrong, let me know. Um, but I am not surprised that she went through that. And, and I think one of the most just heartbreaking parts of that was no way, pretty much no way to wash up after because, you know, she, she talked about it being in the cold of winter, their pipes froze, they didn't have money for soap, they didn't, I mean, they barely had money for food, a lot of times they went hungry, you know, um, uh, you know, she, they didn't have proper clothes, so they didn't have hygiene, uh, proper hygiene, you know, she talked about going to school, and her favorite teacher rejecting her because she smelled so badly and then being pulled into a, the nurse's office who then you know proceeded to tell her about washing up and washing her privates and washing her underwear and just the humiliation she faced with all of those things and with all of that they just wanted to go to school they just loved school so much and just wanted to be in school and it just it broke my heart to see kids it's like you really, really, really um, want to learn, but everything in your home life just completely is so bad that even going, it's like challenging, even going to a place of learning, you know, and she talked about no one really ever asked them what was going on at home, you know, and it just, oh my God. <laughs> It just broke my heart. Um, oh, Teresa says, uh, yes, I was thinking I was on the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> that would do it. And that would definitely do it. That will definitely do it. And then next thing you know. But yeah, it just, um, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, <sighs> Goodness, it, it just re it's just really terrible. I, I think too, she talks about, you know, it being winter, they had no heat. So they all kind of bundle up together in a you know, rat infested apartment. And then you get up the next morning, they have to, you know, try to wash their clothes at night and being able to have them to get up the next morning because they have no heat, your clothes isn't dry. And then they have to put on the wet clothes to go to school and throughout the day, the clothes dry. And it just like, I, I just, I, you know, part of me is just like, well, where are the family? Are there, you know, extended family, uncles and aunts? Are there no uncles, no aunts, no anyone around that, you know, that could help, that can, you know, look out for them, that can, you know, help. It just, and, and that's the, the, the hard part. You see the same thing, say, like in Tyler Perry's um, book, you say it a little bit with Harry as well. It's so funny, we're reading sort of the, you know, in different levels and in different ways, the same kind of childhood abuses, whether it be emotional or physical, and how the wider family played no role in helping to protect the kids. And it just, you know, it just, it broke my heart to see that, to see like, you know, that they're aware, you know, the one thing, I mean, we, I, again, I come from an abused background. And so the one thing in, you know, the Caribbean, I grew up in the Caribbean, um, you know, no matter what your household is like at home, back where I come from and, and how my house was, you did not walk out of the house looking unkempt because, you know, my relatives are like, no, 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 no. I mean, our clothes was, I mean, ironed and starched. I mean, if, you, if you've been grown up in the Caribbean, you know what that is like. You wash your clothes on weekends and everything is ironed on Sunday, on Sunday night. And then it's starched to, to the T's and then it's there for you for the week. So you leaving your, it doesn't matter that you're, you know, you're abused or whatever. When you walk out of that house, you are put together. Not so for Viola. She didn't have that. 
you know, and um, in my case, we had, you know, my extended family, we had food and they would always bring food and all of that stuff to us. And so we didn't have to go hungry. But the other stuff, the all the abusive stuff was there, you know, and so it just, um, you know, um, <sighs> Goodness, I just I can't. I'm on top of just you know all the stuff she was going through. Having I think that having to go to school with wet clothes in the winter, it just like that. I mean, I just I can't even with that, you know. And so I just so I, I'm not surprised that that you know she was wetting wetting her bed. I'm not surprised that she was wetting her bed um, for until college. I mean, there's that is so much for a child. The fear of you know of going out, the fear of what her friends think about her, the fear of you know what the teachers you know they're all like pulling away from her because she smelled. You know, you go home, you're you're abused, you're hungry, you're tired, you're not sleeping, you're falling asleep in school. I mean, and then of course she started acting out of course you know it's like you have to get out that uh, you know the anger the pain the fear all of the things and on top of that she was also being sexually abused and so it's just like where do you you know where do you get any kind of protection you know so i just it just oh god um, Teresa says, um, I grew up in the Caribbean and that's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, many, many of us in the Caribbean and maybe Africa and countries as well have those things. You have the abuse in the background, but you, when you walk out of the house, you are put together. Nobody would ever know. And you keep that secret. Nobody would know that you are abused in whatever way you're abused. You don't. People don't know that you know, because you are put together and dressed to the nines because you have to keep up appearances, you know? And so she didn't have that. There was not, no way for them to keep, they had no money. They had no resources to do anything, you know? And um, it just, um, I think for me overall for the book, and as, you know, again, if you guys, anyone want to call in, I'm going to put the link in the show notes again. If anyone want to call in, um, please do call in and chat with me about what you think. It's, uh, the link is there and, or just um, share with me in the chat or else I'm just going to talk about what I, you know, what I got out of the book. Um, my, for me in all of this, you know, whether it's, it was in school or at home or or, you know, wherever Viola end up, ended up in theater and film and all of those things. One of the things that um, for her, the biggest thing was for her to be seen. She just wanted to be seen. She just wanted to, for people to see her, you know, for her to feel like she's worth something because she went through her whole life feeling that she's not worth anything, that she doesn't deserve love. She didn't deserve to be taken care of. She didn't deserve, um, you know, to feel worthy or, you know, that she could accomplish anything. Um, and so I just, you know, to go through, and I so relate to those feelings. I mean, when you've been abused, those are the things that, you know, that's there. Those are the things that's drilled into you that you're not worth anything. That's what that is, you know, because if you're worth something, you don't abuse people or things that you think are worth something. So the normal thing is, you know, um, you're not worth anything. Um, lady, oh, LDN lady says, I grew up messy, dressed, LOL, but my parents and siblings were great. <laughs> oh, okay. So, oh, wait, you grew up messy, dressed, um, but your parents and siblings, okay. So was that by choice um, or you just messy um, by choice or it's just that, you know, that's just how, how your environment was? So um, let me know. Um, Teresa says, uh, for what she's gone through, I can't believe she pulled through it all. I know it's 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 miraculous the things that she has done and she's been able to do in spite of um in spite of what she's gone through. And yes, I, I totally agree. Um, the different types of abuse, some of it's similar, the, the mental abuse is there. Um, you know, Harry didn't have the, well, other than with William and um, that he shared um, the abuse, but, uh, or at least parental abuse, like she didn't have that. Uh, he didn't have that, but you have Tyler and now Viola. They all, I mean, 
it all affects your mental health in every single way. Um, one of um, the things that also um, that I thought about um, was just in spite of all the horror that they've gone through, she and her sisters was just, you know, when there's their little sister Danielle was born and just the love that she had for Danielle. And, you know, one of the, the, the the thing about children is the capacity to love, the capacity to be like, you know, that it, it is just in them to love. Their nature is not to, you know, their nature is not to pull away. Their, they, they're just unconditional in their love and they just want to love and be loved. And it's just like, the, that just jumped out from the book so much. It's just how much he loved her baby sister and wanting to protect her baby sister and just the pain and horror of watching her baby sister go through and had to live through the horror, no matter how much he tried to protect her, to live through watching her parents abuse, you know, her dad abused her mom as he did and having to leave her sister there. And when she was eventually had to go off to college and all of that stuff, having to leave her sister there and her sister crying, you know, that she wanted to come and buy, to be with her and Viola not having the means to have, be able to, you know, protect her sister from all the abuse in that home. And then having her sister, you know, doing everything she can to help her sister. But when you live in that kind of, you in that kind of environment, you go one way or another. You know, Viola was able to pull out of it and she's still, I mean, she's still suffering the, you know, the, the effects of her childhood. But her younger sister, Danielle, wasn't able to. She's not, a, you know, I, I'm hoping she has been able to be clean by now. But, you know, through the book is that she, you know, got into drugs and she got pregnant very young as a teenager. And I think um, by the end of the book, she had like six kids, three of them that um, her her mom and dad had to raise because she did she just didn't have any means and so you see this cycle of um you know her dad with alcohol you know he has his pain from i'm sure his past of abuse and alcohol that wasn't resolved so he brought that into his family and the cycle of black poor alcoholism abuse and all of that stuff with his family and danielle and others are not able to get out of that environment and not able to claw themselves out. And then the effects of that is she got into drugs and brother got, you know, his life was a mess and other sisters, you know, even when they leave, they come back because of financial problems and poverty and the dog. It's just this whole horrible cycle in this family that even when some of them have left, they went right back into it. And so there was a point coming to the end of the book where Viola's like, there were like 15 people living in this one home where she literally tried to get her parents, you know, when everything ended, you know, the end of it where even her dad changed and all of that stuff. And she tried to get them a bigger uh, place for them to live. She couldn't find a place for them to live because there were 15 people, including grandkids and cousins and all of that stuff in an environment, and, and you know, an alcoholic, drug addicted environment, and nobody can help each other. And that cycle in that case, you know, continued. And it just, it just, it's heartbreaking to see, you know, that situation. And, and hopefully that since Viola is able to come through it and have a, you know, come, um, a whole different life that others in the family can be able to, you know, use her as an example to come out of it. And so it's just, oh my goodness. It, it's just so heartbreaking to see how that cycle continues. And if you don't claw your way out, you just will stay right in there. Um, let's see. Um, Mandy, hi Mandy Guat, hello, says to come from so much adversity, persevere and make it in Hollywood is beyond inspiring. I am telling you, it is, I, I mean, so true, Mandy. It just like, it's like you reading and you realize this woman is a miracle. You know, she's an absolute miracle, um, what she's been able to accomplish and being able to, even while dealing with her stuff, 
you know, you think as an adult, she is like, okay, I got out of there. I started acting. I started making money. I'm now in Hollywood. And you would think that, you know, she is, all of that is behind her. And at the end of it, you realize, no, it's not behind her. She's just grown to accept who she is. She's grown to embrace that, as she said in the end, that eight-year-old girl. She's learned to embrace her and hug her and own her and own her life instead of run away from what she was and who she was back then. Um, thank you. Yeah, it is beyond inspiring. Teresa, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you guys. Um, one of the things, um, she talked about too, was when she left, um, you know, home and she, you know, she auditioning and all of that stuff. She got roles in different places and, uh, you know, she ended up going to Juilliard for a while. And one of the, you know, it was really, you know, cause Juilliard is right here. And I go by Juilliard all the time. And so it's just so wild that, you know, I'm reading it and it just, she talks about her experience at Juilliard and how hard it was and how, you know, soul killing in a lot of ways being at Juilliard was because in every way they geared everyone to embrace the white version of art. So it's like she had to strip away all of who she was and all of her experiences that made her who she was up until that point. And she had to strip away and buy into the white version of who she, or at least their idea of the white version of who she was supposed to be in, you know, with whether it's the plays or the music or the costumes and all of those things, none of which she can relate to, you know, and none of it was her. So it was soul killing because the, the, the Viola that found, you know, art and the escape that she found and the joy that she found in art it was like, you know, all of that stripped away because she, you know, she was being trained to become somebody she's not and to embrace someone she is not to the point where, you know, they couldn't even use stuff from, you know, Martin Luther King or, um, you know, they could, they weren't able to do any of those stuff. And it wasn't until Juilliard sponsored this thing in uh, the Gambia in Africa um, to, you know, where she was able to go and really embrace the culture there, embrace the artistry, the African artistry, and be able to really get in touch with who she is with the other women and men there with who dance and music and art and all the things that they did in the Gambia, that she was able to reconnect with that part of her life. And I'm so happy, you know, even though her experience at Juilliard in the U.S. was um, not helpful in, in her, for her, um, it was great that they were, she was through Juilliard, she was able to go on that, um, that, on that trip. So that way she can really reconnect with the art as a black woman, as a black, a dark skinned black woman. And I love how she talks about and she focuses in on being a dark skinned black woman because us dark skinned black women, especially in the arts, uh, we, you know, as she said, you know, we don't are not looked in as the beautiful one, the ones that could have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or be in love and all of those things. And um, so I'm so happy that she just really focuses in on who she is as a dark skinned black woman. And so I, again, I'm really happy to see that, um, uh, that she really got to own that, you know, whether it's her hair braided in hair and, you know, the insecurities of going on auditions with her hair. She had, you know, she had the insecurities with her hair, with her lips, with her, you know, I mean, there were all of these things that were against her. But, it, you know, but getting a role, um, you know, her one of her big, uh, I think it was a film role, you know, and one of the things that got it for her was her hair, <laughs> the hair that she was just like, oh no, the hair is a problem. And that helped her get, you know, um, get, get a role. And that, that had to be really reaffirming. So I really love that about it. Um, another thing that really um, stand out for me was, um, you know, with all the things that her dad did to them, the abuse, the fear, the just, trying to literally kill his mother, to kill his wife, is the 
astounding change that happened in him as he grew older, where he changed from this abusive man to this kind, gentle person where the grand, you know, and they had to uh, basically adopt Danielle's three kids and her brother's other kids and other family members' kids, um, you know, and take care of them. And he just completely changed into a brand new person, a person there just, you know, just to meet the needs of his wife, the wife that he was literally trying to kill, you know, earlier. And, um, uh, it, Teresa says, um, it's hard for dark-skinned Black women to make it in this business. My experience of it here, makeup and hair. Yo, my gosh. It, always. Always. And, to, you know, even their models and stuff and, and actors that talks about being on set. I, I experienced that. Um, and not having someone with um, the proper makeup for black skin women or the proper hair. And so we see people speak out about those things that um, it is hard, you know, um, being on set. But even, you know, you know, if you get on set, that's a big thing. Even getting in, because a lot of time, um, a lot of times it's like, you know, there was a time where dark skin black woman, no, you had to be light skin. You had to sort of fit that kind of, um, you know, you're black, but you know, you are the light skinned version. So you're acceptable if you're darker. No, they can't see you. I mean, as Viola said, she would only get roles or get calls for to audition for either, you know, the drug addicted mother or some, you know, something like that. Um, she wouldn't get the other roles, of, you know, and then, you know, when she got even more popular, I guess, or famous, she became, you know, she became the best friends of somebody. Never the person that would be the main character or fall in love or any of those things because of her skin color. And so, um, so there are so many things that, um, you know, that, that were hindrances. But um, back to her father was, yeah, it's just almost biblical change in him um, to where he became this, you know, gentle, loving person that was just really there for his grandkids. And, you know, one of them was in the hospital and he was the one there. We, they would walk miles and miles and miles to the hospital every day to be there to hold this little boy. And it just like, it is amazing that it's just like, I for me, I'm thinking that is just the Lord himself to change someone that way. And his, you know, basically spent the rest of his life just, he's li living a life of apology and just repentance for what he did to his wife and what he did to his family. And, you know, the, the just the fact that her, also to her mom, for me, it's just like, what make you stay? What make you stay in these abusive relationships? And she stayed and then in the end, they become this loving couple that you're like, how did this happen? How did this man who was just spent his all their early life trying to kill her and now they he they have become this loving couple that's there to you know celebrate their grandchildren and celebrate uh, Viola and it literally is biblical change. Talk about a metanoia, a change of heart um, for this man and. You know, Viola talked about, I think it was a director or one of those that really helped her to see them in a different light, you know, to see her parents because he was like, you know, your parents are great. And she's like, really? And she's like, yeah, they're not like um, showbiz, you know, stage parents. They're just here because they just love you and just want you to, you know, just want the best for you. And that was really helped her to see them in a, in a whole new light. And so I just really, um, it was just like to just see the change and to see, um, you know, her journey journey in forgiving her, her father for what he's done again that that um that topic or or that um that thing about forgiving abusive fathers. I mean, you see the same thing. You see it in, in Tyler Perry's book about his father, his abusive father, him having to go through the process of forgiveness and seeing, actually seeing the person and seeing like, what his, what is his life? What was his life before? What, what made him become the thing or the person that he, he became? And so it's just um, really... 
incredible to see that kind of change and them coming to New York to see her plays and just having such a great time. It just, I mean, I'm telling you to go through and live through what they did and get to a place of forgiveness um, for this man before he passed on. It's, it's remarkable because again, all the shocking things that he did and, and, and the, the, crisis that he caused in their lives that they will never get over. They, I mean, they will never, ever, that would never not be part of their life, no matter what their achievements are. And no matter what their achievement um, achievements are in life, that will always be what he did to them was would always be part of their lives. Um, you know, some of the most shocking things to me um, you know, I don't know if you guys in the chat, if you'd like to share what the most shocking things to you. So I will, since, you know, <laughs> no one is chatting and nobody's saying anything. I'll just keep talking, um, until someone decides to, um, but some of the most shocking things for me, um, was the, that, the monster when um, she talked about, you know, this guy who they looked at, they referred to as a monster that came into their neighborhood, ran, um, you know, ran behind, I guess, their house. And then he basically killed the cat in front of them. And the shock and horror of that is unreal. Like, I cannot imagine as a child seeing something that horrendous in front like i don't know how you get over that i don't know how you get that image out of your head like i i really don't know how you do that you know so um that was one and realizing that it was a vietnam vet who was in the middle of ptsd his wife had you know apparently kicked him out and he was right in the middle of it and apparently that's what they did in, v in Vietnam. He was a Vietnam vet and he was, I guess, out in the bush for so long. That's how they survived, by right? killing rats and cats and eating them. And in the middle of that, that's where he was. He, you know, when you're going through, you know, you know with PTSD, it's like you're li reliving those experiences. Like he's reliv reliving Vietnam right there in front of them. And I don't know. And, and that totally tracks. That totally tracks from the, you know, experience people that I've spoken to who've had PTSD, who experienced PTSD from Vietnam, that totally tracks. Um, you know, the grunts out in the field, you can't imagine the things that they've lived through and have to do to survive out there in the field. And a lot of them, they come back to the US, commit suicide. A lot of them have killed their partners a lot. I mean, it's been horrendous, the things that has happened and to them because of their experience in Vietnam or different wars. So that totally tracks when I saw that. Um, um, another thing that was very um, shocking to me was the sexual assault on um, Danielle, little Danielle. She was in, a, I guess, a deli across the street, an old man. And, and the people there knew. They knew what was happening and they allowed this old man to sexually abuse their daughter, um, her. And so that was just the shock of that, you know, and then this old man never, um, you know, they put him to jail, but then he wasn't charged with anything. He just had to pay Danielle a field, I think it was 20, 20, 20 something dollars a month or something like that for a few months. That's it. Nobody got any kind of anything for what they did to her. The other things that was shocking to me was the fires, the fires in their home. It's just like these little kids have to live with the, the, the idea that their house could burn down at any moment with them in there. And they had to jump out of, I mean, it's just like a shocking things, you know, going to school, smelling like pee, going to school with wet clothes. You know, that she talked about their dog um, and this pops dying in the basement and them trying to save the dog and the dog biting at them because the dog is trying to save the pups. And I mean, it's just like all of these things happening to them. And so it's just like shock after shock after shock after shock. And again, the fact that she was able to, you know, overcome in spite of all of those things and not run away from her past. And, you know, she has gotten help she's gotten you know she got a therapist and that's helpful through that to is helping her through um you know her um life story and helping her to deal and to be able to reconcile so many of those things along with you know 
And I forgot I had these pictures, you know, these are pictures of her mom and her dad. Um, you know, I completely forgot I had these. Um, you know, nobody should go through that, you know, and you look at these pictures of them now that she's grown and you think, wow, this is the man that was so abusive. You know, they look so different when they're older, right? He looks like this kind, gentle soul in which he became in the end. But this is the man that was so, that put, made their life hell. You know, and this is the mom who stayed, even though her dad treat, treated her so, her husband treated her so awful that this woman withstood all of those things and fought for her kids and stayed there with her kids. And it's just like amazing, you know, the strength and, and, and the resilience that she has. And no wonder Viola loved her as much, you know, because there are really cute stories in there with her and Viola. Um, and also, these are Viola's sisters and her their mom. I'm not sure which is which. I know them. That's the mom on the on the left, but the others, I'm not sure. You know, Viola and three of them. At the uh, Danielle is not in here, but um, and I don't think. Um, but um, and I was trying to find pictures of them, and this is the only one I saw with all of them, um, except Danielle. But um. Um, so yeah, it just, it's, I think this was back in 2018 or something like that. So that's Viola in there. And also this is a picture she, Viola posted back in 2020, happy birthday to my baby sister, Danielle. And I'm assuming that's Danielle in the, in the white there and it's her birthday. And so that's the only picture I saw of her, um, you know, now that they've grown up, but, but again, she was going through a, her own trials with, with um, substance abuse and, you know, early pregnancy and all of those things. And so it's, it's amazing the things that she's gone through, but, you know, and then she met her, her husband and, um, and uh, adopted her uh, daughter. That's them, you know, the little girl there. She's uh, very young. Uh, her daughter, Genesis, and her husband, Julia Tenen. And so, um, you know, now uh, Genesis is now grown up with a little red hair, you know, <laughs> she's doing stuff. And, you know, to see her, what her life has become now, it's just, it's so wonderful to see that she's been able to live through. But it, in, in spite of all the things that's been happening, life still happens, she, you know, father passed away. She also had health problems, you know, fibroid issues that really um, life changing and threatening injuries. She had to, you know, um, basically, um, you know, I guess, what do you call it? You tie your tubes, I guess what you call that. You know, she can't have kids anymore. She can't, I'm not anymore. She can't have kids because of her uh, medical issues. And so, um, so she adopted uh, Genesis, uh, you know, who she met in, a, I think in an orphanage, I guess she first started going to visit and finally adopted um, Genesis. And to see this woman with all of the things that she's gone through, fight through tooth and nail while going through, um, you know, she's, performing and you see her in these wonderful roles and she's Academy Award winner and Emmy winner and Tony winner and all of those things. All the while, all the drama is going on in the background for her, you know, and including uh, medical, her own medical condition, as she called life still happening. So it is just amazing. And uh, her sisters are Diane, Dolores, Anita, and Danielle. And so, I mean, uh, that's the one thing that stands out for me is her love for her sisters. She just loved them. And she mentioned her brother shortly, but I don't think they have any kind of a relationship. It doesn't seem. Um, I think there was also abuse there with that brother. And so, um, but it's just, for me, it's so inspiring to see um, what she has come through and who she is. And she talked about just, you know, um, and again, I, um, her television show, um, How to Get Away with Murder, I think it was called. And, you know, just even she talked about just the insecurity she felt even getting that kind of role because of the kind of role it is. It's uh, she calls it a sexualized role. She's a woman with a husband and a boyfriend and she's also bisexual and she may or may not have committed a murder. And she has all these dynamics that you wouldn't normally expect a dark skinned black woman that looked like her to get. And that's what she said. And she even said one I think one of her friends who was in theater sort of clued her into even 
black people's or black men and women's thoughts about her getting that role where you know she said you know one of her friends i guess backstage of whatever show she was doing clued her in that you know black actors on that show was saying that they don't they, they just can't feel her she doesn't turn them on she doesn't think the show they don't think the show would do well because she doesn't fit the the typical black person that would get a role like that aka you know Kerry Washington or someone they deem prettier or maybe lighter skinned or you know um thinner than say Viola Davis they didn't expect her someone like her to get a role like that that could be successful on television of course you know, we know now the history of that. She got an Emmy for that, and she was fantastic in that. You know, and it was a big hit. Um, How to get a baby mother was a big hit, and she talked about that being the thing that really got her to a place of like accepting. Yes, this is me. I can do it because you know why can't a black woman that look like me have a husband and and be in love and probably be a murderer and have the career and have all of these experiences that you know only they would only cast a white or a lighter skinned black person to do why can't in real life black women live these lives all day why can't it be represented on screen you know and i love that i love she was able to that she's been able to get into that place and really 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 embrace who she is and use who she is and all all the things in her life um you know th to be able to bring that character to, to life and what a success that had been for her so and then of course we know she got the academy award she won the academy award and all of that stuff and so i'm like i am so proud of her and it's so funny i, I talk about um i was walking by lincoln center um a few days ago and i was listening to it and i walked by and i don't know and i was i had to walk fast and so i couldn't read the the bill billboard she was on this bill big billboard at lincoln center and so and i and as i'm reading book and i walked past and i saw her photos and the thing that was on my heart like i just wanted to hug her if i had just seen her on the street i would have been like can i hug you can i just hug you you know and i love the fact that you know she feels seen as she has a husband that sees her and a daughter that sees her and she sees herself as who she is and i i just really 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 embrace that i mean she is beautiful and you know and i'm glad she knows now that she's beautiful that she's worthy that everything she has she deserves it you know that she sees her worth and you know and i'm sure you know as a fellow black skin dark skinned black woman it's a struggle to see that it's a struggle when society tells you otherwise all the time to see that you're beautiful you are stunning you're gorgeous you're worthy you know and the world is lucky to have you you know <laughs> and i'm glad she's there you know, so I just really, and I'm glad she's embraced and she's not putting aside, you know, her past and trying to hide from it, but that she's embraced it, owned it, and she's not apologetic about the things that she's gone through. And she uses it in whatever it is she's doing because it made her who she is. So I'm really, really happy she's in that place. So that's what I got out of it. Um, you know, and oh, I see a couple more comments have come up. I'm going to look at your comments. Again, if anyone wants to um, uh, chime in before we end, that would be, you know, give us a call. That would be, that would be awesome as well. So let's see. Um, uh, let's see what else, a few others I get. Um, Teresa says um, she is a strong actri actress. Yes, she is. And not only is she, she's a strong actress, but she's also a strong advocate for Black women and Black equity in um, Hollywood. She speaks out a lot about um, the unequal, um, the just on the, the, the pay scale, the, how unequal it is, especially for um, Black women. She also speaks out about the lack of great roles for Black women, and uh, not just Black women, but Black people in general, especially Black women, the lack of great roles and lack of opportunity. You know, white actors have all these opportunities that are not available to Black and Brown people, and she speaks out really. She uses her voice um for uh, to speak out about that um let's see what else um 
Church Nale, how are you? <laughs> Church Nale is just joining. Hello, Church Nale. We're just about ending um, our little book club. Um, uh, let's see. A little Max, hello, hello, little Max says, I love when she says, I am not the Black Mary Street. I am Viola Davis. I, isn't that just beautiful? Isn't that just beautiful? She knows who she is. You know, people like to compare. You know, and she and the thing is, she loves marriage. They're great friends. She loves Meryl, and I love that she talks about just you know working with Meryl Streep um, on I think what was it that um, movie with the priest? Oh shoot, oh, was it Doubt? I think it was. I think it was Doubt that she worked with Meryl Streep. And she loved, they are great friends. And she loved Mary Streep. She loved doing the help with, um, you know, um, uh, what is her name? O Olympia? All of a sudden, I can't remember all the people in, in the help, but her help castmates. <laughs> It's been such a long time since I've, um, since I've watched that film, but um uh, but it's just, uh, I, I love the relationships that she has with um, those ensemble casts of really, really strong actors. Like with their help, I think it was like with Emma Stone and um, what is her name? Olivia, Olympia. I don't remember the, the actress's name. Black actress who was um, who was in the help with her. All of a sudden the name, her name has slipped me. Um, well, actually, you know what? I need to know her name. Let's just look up her name. And I just don't know why. Let's see. The Help Cast. Ah, Octavia. That's it. Octavia. Why was I thinking Olympia? Octavia. She talked to so lovingly about the cast with Emma Stone, Octavia, Spencer, Jessica Chastain, um, Bryce Dallas Howard, and uh, Allison Jenny, Mike Vogel, Chris Lowell, and the rest. And... Um, you know, and she talked about um, just the director, Tate Taylor, just how amazing he was and how much he made a family, like his door was always open and he made such a great, incredible family of that. So I was just really happy that, you know, in spite of what was happening with her real family in different um different settings and different with different casts um for different films that she was able to have some sense of family there so yeah it's just um really really i'm happy she had those experiences and and now to have her own husband and her own daughter is just must be so incredibly satisfying um let's see um anything else before we leave before we end uh, let's see Cookies and Cream says, I've always loved Viola Davis. She's a phenomenal actress and human being. Yes, she is. And which behooves me to go watch all her movies now. Now I'm like, okay, I need to see everything Viola Davis. <laughs> I need to see everything about her because I'm so inspired to... Um, um to to just get to know everything about her no church nelly you cannot <laughs> you cannot get away with murder and so and yeah i have to go see that i have to go see that too and kudos to shonda rhyme because shonda is the one that hired her to do you know uh for how to get away with murder shonda land they produced it and so um at least her production company. And so they really, I'm telling you, black people helping out black people. That's why I appreciate Shonda and Tyler Perry so much. Um, Ava DuVernay, the same way, uh, the same thing. I mean, for really hiring and really making sure black talents are out there, especially black women and giving them roles that normally you wouldn't, they, Hollywood wouldn't put them in, you know, and see them succeed in this way. It is amazing. So anyways, guys, uh, let's see. Teresa says, with all her turbulence in her life, it made her strong. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yes. So anyways, um, that's it. That's what I got. Um, definitely um, in our regular comments, definitely. <laughs> Um, 
And definitely, uh, you know, you can definitely share your comments in our regular comments as well. So thank you guys for joining. Um, you know, I wish more people were able to come in and chat about it. But um, I'm happy for all our friends who have joined us just to hear a little bit about Viola Davis. And if you haven't read the book, please go ahead and read it. It is amazing. Um, you know, it's just, I'm um, just going to put it back up there. It is um, uh, Viola Davis finding me. It is absolutely, actually, um, let me move our banner. Well, I'll leave it there. Um, finding me by, by Viola Davis. It is an absolutely incredible book. I mean, warn you, you may have to read it in doses because it is intense. So yeah, so that's uh, for me, that's what I got out of it. The things that impacted me the most. And it really, really inspires me to not allow, no matter what it is I'm going through, no matter what it is that's in life that you can overcome, you can embrace whatever it is and, you know, use it to, um, you know, it, because, uh, you know, whatever you're going through makes you who you are. So no sense trying to pretend it's not there. <laughs> Deal with it and, you know, and and still pursue whatever it is you're pursuing. So that is really, that's what it really inspires me to do. So um, definitely go ahead. Um, Gwendolyn says, but exactly. I uh, can't read it all at once. Yeah, no, it, it's a lot. It's, it's definitely a lot to taking all at once. So, but anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys, um, all of of you who um, were on the chat, um, maybe next time we can have a book um, that's comedic since we had three in a row that was really deep, <laughs> maybe a lighter book <laughs> the next time. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe next time, you know, more people will call in and and, and that would be fantastic as well. Um, that's okay, Angela. That's fine. The replay is there. Um, so definitely, I am happy that you <laughs> you're, uh, stopped by. Oh, hello, Black Queen. I see all our friends are just coming. That's all right. Replays are there. Replays are there. That's fine. That's why it's there. So anyways, um, until our next book club, thank you to our wonderful moderators. Um, you know, a couple of them are here, Cookies and Cream and Church Nelly. Um, thank you guys so much for the incredible work that you do moderating. Um, moderating always and just making it fun and light and safe. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you uh, to all of our Two Cents crew that supports the channel on a monthly basis. I appreciate all of you so much um, for that and for your support. Thank you, all of you. And thank you to our Gold Star supporters who support in the chat. You can see um, whether it's super stickers, super thanks, super chats, all of that wonderful stuff. Thank you all so much for taking the time to just support the channel out of the good, you know, the kindness of your heart. You don't have to do this. You do, but you do it anyway. So I appreciate that. And uh, uh, thank you very much. And to if you're new here, um, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel um, and click the notica notification bell. So that way, you know, when we drop a video, please like, share. And also, if you're able, join our Two Cents crew as well. So thank you guys. Have a fantastic day, whatever you're doing this weekend. And I'll probably catch you tomorrow. I'll probably be doing a live tomorrow. So I will most likely catch you then. I love you all. Have a fantastic, uh, fantastic Saturday. Bye.